Hi, it's Handy Val. This coolant sensor may not seem like much and may not cost a lot, but it carries a lot of responsibility. It's the last line in defense in keeping your engine from overheating to the point of no return. This sensor is responsible for ensuring that these auxiliary fans come on when the engine is overheating. This part of the sensor is actually embedded in the coolant, so it's measuring the coolant temperature. Without any modifications, this sensor will trigger these auxiliary fans to come on when the temperature of the coolant reaches over 107 degrees Celsius. So 99% of the time, this sensor triggers nothing. It just sits there as these Mercedes should only get over 107 degrees Celsius if something is wrong. And if something is wrong, then this sensor is the last line in defense in ensuring that your engine remains cool and doesn't crack or blow a head gasket under extreme heat. In this video I'll be replacing it on my R129 but its function, purpose and location is similar for all early model R129s whether it's the 300 or the 500 etc and many other late 80s and early 90s Mercedes like the W124, the W201 and the W140. In the video links below in the video description, I explain its function in much more detail and also how to test if it's in working condition. I know mine is no longer working because I tested it. It's dead. Watch my videos in the video description and test yours too. So let's replace it. All right, so let's free up a little bit of space around here. Again, depending on your model of the R129 or the W124, you may have a little bit of different space. I want to free up some space. This is a 19 socket we need. We need a deep socket here. A, a three quarter inch will also work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to free up some space. Okay, push this to the side. Now before I do anything further, I'm wearing gloves and eye protection and further I'm working on a cold engine. This car hasn't been run in over a week and coolant on a recently run engine is hot and it can steam in your face. So I'm taking every precaution possible. I'm also doing this on a full coolant level, which means that if I start to remove the old one, I will lose some coolant, as you can see, right? There's gonna be a there's gonna be a hole there, and coolant will will seep out. So what we want to do is cover this with some rags. Okay, so I'm just trying to do the best I can here to kind of cover up in case anything does kind of make its way out. I don't create a I don't create a big mess here. Okay, microfiber would work. Okay. Before I start, what I'm going to do, I'm going to depressurize the system by removing the coolant cap. Now, shouldn't be much, much in this car anyway because it hasn't been run in a while. But this will certainly help and will prevent fluid kind of trying to gush through that spot. Okay, I'm going to need to be quite quick as I take the old one out, put the new one in, and as I put the new one in, I need to make sure that I cleanly screw it in, okay, because I don't want to strip any of the metal material there, okay? Now, the other thing also you're going to notice is that I'm using a washer. Okay, you could use any washer that part of your engine oil kind of plug. These are the ones to use. So let's, let's get a deep socket, and let's try removing it. Now, you need a 19 millimeter. I don't have a 19 millimeter. Now, the Newton meter specs on this aren't a lot. It should only be done to about 25 Newton meters. So it's not, it's not, shouldn't be in there really embedded, but you just, you, didn't, you just never know here. So let's give it a shot. Okay. Bring this guy in there. I think what I want to do is kind of just crack the nut first and then kind of go in there with my hands. Okay. Looks like we got it. Okay, it's coming out. I'm going to be awfully ready to go in with the new one as soon as this one comes out. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming coolant should be coming out from there, but you just never know. Okay, if we get in there a little bit. There you go. I did lose a bit of coolant. I hope we got it now. Okay. 
you could kind of hear that. <laughs> Didn't work out quite as good as I thought, my little rags here, but hey, car could definitely take coolant. Okay, all right, we definitely stopped right now. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so I got my torque specs here, and it's gotta be, tw I've got it set at 25. Yeah, looks like we got it. Okay, so let's take these rags out. You're definitely going to want to clean around there because now you're going to want to. We're going to want to see if we're losing any. I got the old one there, and it's really hard to see, but it actually. Again, I said I've tested this; it's no longer working. But it is an original Mercedes. Kind of see the symbol right there. Hopefully, you could kind of capture it. Number of writing all around it, um, but 91 M11. Not sure. Made in Germany. Uh, so this clearly was, yeah, clearly original. I also have resistors here for a modification to the sensor. This will allow the fans to come on at a lower temperature. And so let's, uh, let's connect one. We're going to do an easy connection to it, then put the cap back on. Now, obviously, I've got a bunch of them here. This is how you buy them. Very cheap. So let's, uh, let's install one. Now the trick here is to kind of get it wrapped around there. And I know there's, there's a couple of different approaches to do it. You could try manually do it. You could, there's, there's, a, there's a, obviously an old, an old technique where you kind of wrap this around a nail and then you put it over there. So let's, let's give that a shot. Let's try that out and see if we could just dump this guy on. All I want to do is just put this around it. At the same time, you want to get the other one around it as well. You're just going to want to fiddle with it. And you could use a screwdriver kind of just to push it down. Now, the other thing you just want to make sure is that they're never touching each other, right? They're never, you know, this side of the resistor extensions aren't touching any of those. And you kind of got it. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit of space there. So when we could put, so if you come in from over here, okay. You see that? Just give it a little bit of space. Now you want to. I'll have all the all the description of this resistor and exactly what it does. You'll be seeing it alongside the video. So that's it. Let's just put this one on. Let's see how that goes. You're gonna to want to top it up your coolant for whatever you've lost. Now here I think we've lost a little bit. How much? Sure. Maybe like a quarter cup, half a cup. And you're gonna to want to fill it up. I just did right now. And so kind of if you look inside there, that's kind of how you want it to be. You don't want to see any white. And it just wants to be at the top of, of the black where the white meets the black. That's the proper coolant level. All right, so that's about as much as has been dropped. Not bad, actually. So again, that's probably like a quarter of a cup at most. Okay, so we pulled it out of the garage. I've got the cap off here. Now the idea is you want it to run. And you need it to get to about 85 degrees Celsius where the water pump comes on. And the idea when the water pump comes on, it's going to force, there's likely a little bit of an air bubble here. It'll force that air bubble up to its highest point on the car. To facilitate this, you can take it out for a drive as well, 10, 15 minutes on hilly terrain. Or if you can put the car up on a little bit of a ramp, if your driveway is, or on a, or on a hill, and do this process just idling. That should be enough to get any little air bubble that's left there out. You're going to want to check the coolant level after you've gone for a ride a few days from now and even a week from now, just, just to be on the safe side. And at the same token, we're also looking for leaks around that. Today, tomorrow, and about a week's time. You know, on the screen, you'll find another one of my Mercedes videos that you'll enjoy and learn from as well. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Handy Val channel. Bye for now.